Generic greetings and welcome back once again to Airships Conquer the Skies. Today's beverage is a nice glass of cranberry juice. So it's been a while since we've done anything with airships and I thought we would rectify that by building something. And in this particular case, we're going to be building something that is not entirely stupid, which is a very big change of pace, especially when compared to the, uh, the more recent videos where we were trying out different interesting quirky designs rather than something that would be a good, be effective, see a bit bland. But either way, we are going to be building a ground vessel in this particular case because there is actually a bit of a gap in our fleet and deployment options. Let's go to design and fight and the landship editor and then open designs and we can see that we have several different types of designs here. They range from the stupid, like this thing here, which was um, trying to uh, exploit unintended game mechanics in targeting systems. We have different variations of that. We have the Atlanta, which was a sort of ram and boarding vessel, but it was fairly garbage. Uh, we have the like, carriers and... Uh, bombers and that sort of thing. We have a big tower of like acid spitters. We have the encroacher, which is just too stupidly large to even field. Uh, we have then the opposite end of the scale, which is a mini tank. We have harpoon walkers, which we're going to grab on things and swing in. They were actually more effective than they deserve to be. The leads wasn't too bad. That was like a bombarding vessel. We have the medusa, which is just a smaller version of the uh, corrector. Uh, then with smaller version there, we then have like mini carriers and mini uh, cannon tanks and all of that sort of thing and the rear tank was actually quite good but you can see the sort of thing we've got going here we've got either a mini something or other or a stupidly large vessel that is overpriced and or and or stupid and what we don't have is basically a standard ground uh, assaulting tank which is in the sort of two to three grand range, fairly heavily armoured, not particularly fast, but certainly has a decent amount of um, equipment on it. So not a mini tank and not a stupidly large vessel, but something in between and quite, quite sensible. So as always, we will focus on what it's going to be armed with first. We want to make this so it can take out... I would say, uh, I think it's going to be for static ground structures, which to be fair, most things on the ground uh, and structure -y tend to be static, so it's sort of redundant, but... We want to be attacking with some probably turrets. I think that would be the way to go. However, heavy turret is probably not what we're looking at. We certainly don't want a heavy cannon. We want something that can also attack air units, but we're not going to be focusing on that as a primary goal. So that'll be our secondary goal. But obviously we want to make sure that we can if we need to shoot air targets. I think we're going to have a bit of a mix and match here where we have essentially like a stacked set of turrets. We have two of these smaller ones and then a large one on the top and that's probably the majority of the weapons that we'll have on this thing. We'll also go for probably a flak gun. I'd say maybe a flak cannon on the back. Oh, we also have a dorsal turret as well, but we can't actually place it. Um, I also don't want anything above this level, so we probably have to go with... Oh, aerial charges is an option, actually. We could put some, like, aerial charges on the back there. Would that work? Aerial charge. A tank charge, suspendium dust, carrying aloft a bomb, fused to explode on contact, often deploys en masse for area denial. It's going to come down to cost. 24 for the aerial charges... And the flak cannon is 104. So the flak cannon would probably be better for... I think it would be better for our needs, but it's also ludicrously expensive. Whereas the aerial charges, we could spam... Well, we could spam four for the price of one flak cannon. What's the range, though? Maximum accurate range, 170 meters. Flak cannon. Maximum accurate range, 1,300 meters. So we're going to go with flak. It's more expensive, but it is better for our needs. And uh, on an aesthetic note, it does actually look better. So that will be the rough size of this thing. Um, in terms of tracks, then, almost certainly large tracks. We're not going to have... We're going to go with tracks. Um... Not going to go with legs. Large tracks would be... That's legs. Large tracks. Yes, large tracks would be perfectly acceptable. What actually isn't in the game, it would be nice to see at some point, is uh, wheels. Um, which I don't know what advantage that would have. Maybe wheels would just be very fast. Um, but obviously not very good. Tracks are sort of your middle ground. The decent speed. 
you can clamber over a lot of terrain. Whereas your legs, uh, not particularly fast, but I believe, uh, well, obviously very good at going over things, whereas wheels would be um, just fast. Anyway, let's place in this track system about there. That should be reasonable, and we can move it around as we need to. But what we'll probably do is build uh, top down. So, Obviously, a lot of things that we haven't got in the moment. We haven't got any armor, we haven't got any coal, we haven't got any ammo. Let's deal with that first. So, we're going to go over to resources and ammo store. Ammo store we will place in, I think, there would be a reasonable. In fact, I'm thinking double ammo store like that. We will go for a fire point right next to it because you need that sort of thing. And I think also a coal store in the back like so would be reasonable too. That's fine as it stands there. We don't have a machine shop, but I think we will probably go for a repair bay. Um, do we need a repair bay is the question. Uh, the answer is probably not, but I think we are still going to have one. Um, this being about sticking in the fight and f keep keeping on firing basically. Um, we will go for command and crew, uh, we've got cultless quarters here, we're not going to use cultless, we're going to use standard quarters, which that will go in there, and the reason I'm placing it at that location, because I'm going to place a berth there, which allows us to go up and then into here, that's fine. Current crew is 15, recommended is 23, we're going to place another one in probably here, like so. And then once again, we'll have a berth to go up there if need be. And also, we're going to have a telescope on the front like so. We won't be able to fit, sadly, a crow's nest on here. Although, uh, no, we won't. We won't have a crow's nest. But a telescope is acceptable. We have 30 crew of a maximum... Well, recommended is 24. That's fine. We have no way to command it yet. What I'm going to do is have a bridge on this thing. And we'll put the bridge in here we'll then also put a cockpit in there we want multiple ways to command this thing because if one gets taken out then that could be all kinds of problematic we need supply hatches and we also need uh, having a supply hatch there though would be quite bad uh, what i'm going to do is move these around a bit i think uh, let me put the overlay on for pathing the problem is having the Having it there means boarding could be an issue. Boarding's always going to be an issue anyway. But do we want to change this up? Do I want to move, say, this uh, to there? Move these round the back like so, and then have that there. That has better pathing, and at least the command's okay. Right, that's fine. We don't have a sick bay but I don't know if it's strictly necessary. I actually don't know whether it's necessary to have all this coal. Having that amount of coal is probably not required. So let's go ahead and have a small coal store instead. We're going to place that, that down the bottom there. We will have a sick bay there. And finally, we need, we need a way to get in. It is a supply of 14... So that will be under resources. We'll go with a reinforced supply hatch, which gives us eight supply. So one and then two is acceptable. Also, while we are here, we can go for troops and a guard. Ah, guard post, but it's only a post. An air marine keeps watch here, deter uh, deterring intruders. But a guard barracks is needed. Um, If we get rid of that... Hmm, no. We've got the recommended amount of crew. What if we place that above there? We'll be able to fit more in, won't we? Like that. That can go up to there. Because you don't need access to the back bit here. And then a guard barracks right there. That could work. That could work. In terms of armour, um, heavy steel armour. Perhaps. That requires metallurgy tier 4. We're not really focusing on what we can get. Mm, steel armor. Heavy steel armor is probably the way to go. It's just 
shy of three grand too, which is, a, I said between two and three grand. Hit points, let's just not look at that. Water supply is good, apart from the front, but that's fine. The main area is around the, uh, the coal stores and the ammo. Ammunition is good. Repair tools is fine. Coal is good. Explosion damage. We just don't look at that. Uh, the problem is this sort of central spine here. So, that is now built. Structural. Uh, do we want to alter the size of it? I don't think so. We have the commands where we want to have them, which is fine. So, we've got command there and command there. So, we've split those across that, just in case we lose one. Uh, we have got a guard barracks. We have got a guard post there to stop people breaching inside here. And we've got the exact number of crew required. We have got a sick bear. We have got a repair bear. Good connections and good uh, transitions. What is a bit of an issue is we don't have any way to go from that floor to that floor. You have to go through this center. If that gets taken out, you can't actually go up to that bit there. That could be a problem. Um, That'll be a Mark II version. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go over to shapes and decorations and we'll see what we can do to make it less boxy although i'm not particularly bothered if it is as boxy as it is now um i don't mind the current look of it uh, but i'm just tempted to put a couple of angles on it just to just make it a little bit less boxy as i've said um That in there. And that in there. What's that look like? Um, I actually quite like that. And I like that there's this gap there with the, the telescope out the front. Okay. That's fine. Um, let's go for decorations then. We've got coats of arms, which we can put on, which is currently the cultist one, because that was the last thing that we played. Um, large coat of arms would fit on there. Although, I'm not a fan of it. Um, Roundel doesn't seem to fit. Uh, these cultist eye symbols, no. On it, coat of arms. Mm, there's nothing that's shouting at me. There's a ornate nameplate. Um, that's quite nice, actually. No. Uh, all these gold leaves and filigree and steering fins, <laughs> which is quite nice. Oh, and chimneys. So this is all new. These are all new. Uh, masts. So these are just, these are not, um, these are just aesthetic ones rather than ones that work. Uh, flags, voltaic cells. Horns. A lot of this was in the game. Um, all these rivets and such. A flag would be quite nice. Although, where can you put it? Um, without it looking daft. On this thing, anyway. Uh, nowhere in particular. Uh, just some nice lighting in places. Uh, we could... The chimney's an option. Do you want to put... What do chimneys look like on there? They look terrible. Um... And the steering fin we don't need. You know what? I think we're just going to do the standard stick a nameplate on it. And call it a day. We'll have the nameplate in the centre. Uh, it's currently called the the Winter. And I don't actually mind that. But let's see what else we've got. Maybe... Maybe it's just a standard coat of arms on the back. See the large coat of arms fits in there. No, don't like it. Mm. I think we're not going to bother to with it. Save the design. Let's give it a go. So that is, I think, a quite sensible design. It doesn't have any glaring weak spots at this design stage anyway. Obviously, when the rubber meets the road, we'll find out exactly what happens there. It might blow up after the first look, never mind uh, hit. So, it's got three cannons, uh, well, three 
three turrets, one large, two of these uh, smaller versions, so and two flak. So it's not actually terribly well armed for the three grand that it costs, but it can take out most things that come across, and it also has the ability to repel borders. It's not going to be very quick, but it doesn't really need to be. So we've saved the design, and we will uh, leave, and let's try that. So combat... Uh, we're going to go for a nice day fight here. We're going to add a land ship and go down to the winter. The winter will be placed um, up a little bit of a height there. And in terms of buildings, have we got anything near three grand? We've got the land fortress, which quite frankly will destroy us in about 30 seconds. But you know what? Let's give it a go. So we're going to place the land fortress in there. I'm going to then move this further down. So this is not a fair fight because this thing is stupidly heavily armed. It's got all the flak on the top, which we're not concerned about. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six standard cannons on the front. And all of these here are the um, sponsons which means that basically we're going to get absolutely annihilated you can see we are firing we are going to move closer because well why actually do we want to move closer we probably want to move back because the sponsons are not that great uh, we're going to go for an aimed fire there we have taken some damage you can see we've taken a hell of a lot of damage. We've actually lost the nameplate. We've got a bit of a fire in the optics room, which is suboptimal. We are losing the... Of all things, we're losing the... <laughs> um, the medical bay. We are causing some damage to them. You can see there are these holes in here. We've, they've lost like a, a flat cannon there. But, um, well... We are certainly taking more damage. There is our optics gone. No target available on the back there. There's a lot of damage being inflicted on that cannon at the top there, on that turret. The two forward turrets are working out quite well. We have caused a bit more damage in there. But basically, we've already lost the fight. I can already tell that we've lost the fight. But uh, you know what? We'll keep going and see what happens. We have lost one, uh, one of our turrets. We've still got this one small turret and one large turret. Shots are still whizzing out, so that is quite good. I'm going to go put it on normal fire there. Uh, maybe if we put it on rapid fire, it would be better. But we are hitting it quite well. We are now out of repair tools. And there's our turret on the top gun, which means that the ammo is now caught fire. We've lost all of the ammo, and that's pretty much uh, game over. So... We have lost that fight. We didn't expect to win it, to be fair. Um, obviously, the, the the whole static structure thing, they are very, very powerful. Just, you know, the, the disadvantage is they can't move. The advantage is they're really cheap, and you can just make a lot of things like that. So let's go with a more balanced and level combat. We'll go for a day fight once again, add the land ship, go to the winter there place the winter ironically we are not fighting in winter let's go for a where is it snow fight and we're gonna add an airship this time so we've got the berlin which is a flamethrower we've got excalibur which is a little bit overpriced we have the harrier which is hmm that could be an interesting one because it's got mm, roughly the same amount of firepower i would say Two cannons and the big turret. And then it's also got flak, which is pointless, plus some bombers and some biplanes. It's a bit of... I don't know if you've seen that. I'm getting some weird graphical glitches there. Artifacts and such just popping around. Um, okay, we'll put the Harrier in here. I don't think this is something we should really be concerned with, quite frankly. Um, but we'll see how it goes. We'll start the fight, and we can see that they have launched their planes. Our flak has immediately shot one of the planes down, immediately shot the second plane down, and then we've got the high-level bomber, which um, we are shooting, and it looks to be taking some damage. It is bombing from a high level, though. So there we go. Um, we are also now able to shoot it with the flak. So I don't know what it was attempting, but we are going to keep going. There goes the bomber, so they have lost all of their planes, which is something you don't want uh, with a carrier. We have now span round, and we are using our turrets to shoot the airship. It looks like we've taken some damage, mainly on the stern, although we have... Uh, got some midsection damage there as well and you can see we can see inside the suspendium chamber there it looks like it is once again trying to fly over us which the flak cannons uh, do 
get into... Uh, they do have a firing solution, which is quite good. We're going to spin back around again. We have caused some fires there, and there's an explosion, and that looks to be the suspendium chamber. They have lost a suspendium chamber. I believe that this has two suspendium chambers, so that's fine. The gun... Do we have the... Yeah, we do have the gun depression to, uh, to be able to shoot this, but we are going to get closer there and just put it on a rapid fire. Because at this range, we shouldn't really have too much of a problem. Outside view, we can see that we have taken some damage. And that is an explosion on their turret. So they have lost... They have lost that turret. So they are down to just two cannons. We are down to... <laughs> we are down to uh, low repair tools. Coal is good. We hardly use any, so you know what? I might remove that other coal star. It is simply not required. Ammo, however, we are using quite a bit of, although we are on rapid fire. It is slowly moving back because it did have suspendium. It has now just lost that suspendium because there's the last chamber gone. Uh, it is still connected. I don't know if you can see this line here. That's actually a... Uh, uh, a landing strip so we can have planes on there but yeah it looks like we are taking some damage are we out of water there yes we are out of water so if we get set on fire that could be all kinds of bad so this fight is certainly not over and oh there is the explosion we have lost our cannon our turret rather so the large turret once again has been taken out it does seem to be a bit of a problem with that thing it does tend to uh, lose that very easily because of the size of it uh, it does tend to get hit and then yeah it's not great these smaller ones however do seem to take a bit more of a beating um, and we are at the moment on a fairly even keel I'm going to knock it up a couple of uh, oh, just one step on the speed there looks like we've defeated it is that it? no we've defeated the back end but the front end's still there they have lost a cannon so they've now Halved in firepower. <laughs> Technically, yes, it is half in firepower, and that's bad. That might have cost us the game. Uh, we have got fire, and it has caused an explosion in the turret. So we are down to one turret. The advantage is we can still ram. In fact, that would be the play. Just ram to there. There you go. We win. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We could have... Um, done that a while ago. Combat stats, this is a new thing as well since I last played. You can see uh, how many deaths uh, we've um, had. So we've got one's been shot and one was burned. We can see on them we had nine shot, four because I destroyed module and one burned. Accuracy is on 54%. Their accuracy was quite high on 88. And you can see the damage taken, we took a lot more damage than they did. Uh, sorry, now damage taken is... 4883 and they took uh, 6560. So actually, yeah, they took more damage there. We actually repaired more than uh, they did as well uh, because they didn't repair anything. Okay, and ship stats as well. You can see that uh, we fired 148 shots. Okay, so we're going to go over to the land ship editor once again, open the design and open the winter. What we're going to do is remove that call start. It is simply not required. We are going to add in some more ammo and the ammo will go down the bottom there so in terms of resources it is ammo small ammo store we'll place it in there do we want to try and cheapen this out at the moment we have uh, more crew than we need so we could remove that but it's not cheaping out by a lot we could remove i mean Let's get everything, anything that's extraneous. We don't want that, or we don't need that, we don't need that, we don't need that, and we don't need that. If we did... Uh, oh, no, because it's still... <laughs> placing it is still uh, keeping it in here, isn't it, in terms of cost. Okay, that, 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 and that. We could get rid of all of those. We could even get rid of the repair and the sick bay. Getting rid of all of those does cheapen it out quite a bit. Surprisingly so. Okay. That changes things. That does change things. What if we rip off a flat cannon and 
reduce this down. Get rid of that. Put that there. Put that there. What's that? What's that in there? Ammo store. That's a small ammo store. Let's get rid of that as well. Get rid of a guard post. And... Place that cockpit there. Place the ammo store there. Bring that down. Um, is it possible? Bridge can go there. That can go there. That can go there. It's all temporarily changed. Um, fuel. Don't care. Move that back. Put that in there. Connect that up. Two berths. That can go in there. Don't need that one. Actually, don't need that one. And... Bridge back there. Still got a cockpit in. Still keep that... Well, how much is the cockpit? 20. It's worth It's worth keeping the cockpit in, then. Um... Just trying to cheapen this out. Really. That. There's the recommended crew in. There's a few more in. But this isn't connected, so as soon as we connect that up, they'll be fine. Although, if we get rid of that, move it further forward, we can probably fit that flak cannon like that. It's very far away from the ammo but it's not too much of a problem what is concerning is how close that is because when that blows up it's probably going to take the bridge with it so what if we get rid of that move that further forward split that up and then put the bridge back in there so the bridge is away from the guns pathing is not great <laughs> and that's as diplomatic as i can put that um Get rid of the reinforced supply hatch and just put a steel supply hatch in. That'll cheapen it out even further. And... Maybe that. Okay. Well... That's got, still got the same amount of mm, primary firepower, shall we call it. We've got one less flak gun, admittedly. But we only need to use that now and again, mainly for aircraft. We have the capability, but we don't have as much as we had previously. We don't have the ability to repair. We don't have the ability to heal crew. But we do still have the ability to put out fires, because that's very important. But... And we still have the same amount of... Uh, we still have the same amount of... Ammo. We could probably get rid of that coal store. And put a smaller one in. Because we don't really use much coal. Coal supply 12 as opposed to 50. Do we want to put two in? Let's do that. That goes in there. That goes in there. And... That's enough. Where's explosion? Explosion damage. See, this is well away from it, which is good. Um, well, they're not so much on that one. Having the cockpit there might be a bad thing, but I think that. Uh, actually, corridor with ladder. Because then you can go up there. Don't need a corridor with ladder there. Okay. That is a much more condensed version. We're going to call it the version 2. It is certainly a version 2. And let's see what that's like. Almost the same amount of firepower. But, 600 cheaper. <laughs> More than 600 cheaper. Which is surprising. 
Uh, the Berlin is actually a, not a bad choice and is pretty much bang on the money for cost. So let's see what happens. So this is the Berlin versus the Winter version 2. Winter's a lot cheaper. I'm going to, say, move and move back over. It'll also be a lot quicker now because it's lighter. And it's going to go right over the top of us, which is interesting because... Quite frankly, I don't care about that because I have a flak gun. Obviously, if we had more flak, it would be better, but we don't, so there you go. Looks like the Berlin has decided to cut the grass, and we have managed to take out one of the flamethrowers, which is excellent. And we must have hit the suspendium chamber because it's now stuck on the ground. And quite frankly, I think the way to win this is uh, do a cheeky bit of ramming because, yes, we're going to get flamed and it's going to hurt, but... Mm, okay, maybe that was just the bad... That, that, that was just a terrible call because not only did it get it uh, unstuck, it also caused some damage onto us and, uh, yeah, not great. All right. So, we are... Oh, basically we've won. Uh, let's go on to aim fire, and there we are. The reason we've won is because although it has a large suspendium chamber in there, it's lost its only means of propulsion. So we might as well get a little bit closer because it's only armed with one more flamethrower, so yeah. All right, immediately I think that is a better design, mainly because of its cost. I think it was previously over-engineered. The thought was there, but it was perhaps over the top in terms of we didn't need all oh that's the suspension chamber going and it lands now <clears throat> i want to say lands i mean crash lands although it is still technically a landing of some kind yeah i think that is better it's certainly fared well there let's leave that fight because we have won it go back to combat go land ship winter version 2 airship and let's put something more sensible. The Dresden. The dreaded Dresden, which is a high-level bomber. Something which should defeat us very easily. And also, they have some money left over. Not much, but enough to get a Barry. 2467 versus 2424. They are underpointed, but we have the... We have the armor advantage. Standard fire rate. I'm going to move back over. We are currently targeting the Dresden. We have caused some fires, which is excellent. I am going to go straight towards the Barry. My object is to simply keep moving. I need to keep moving so that the bomber can't get a decent uh, arc of fire on me. I'm going to spin it around there, though, I think, because... We need to get some shots out at least. There we go. There's the shots. Uh, I'm going to say move and just move it backwards. We're just going to keep driving it backwards. Looks like we caused some damage somewhere because it's slowed right down. Uh, bombs are being dropped and no, it is still trying to get towards us. We are managing to flak uh, with the rear gun there. Keep going backwards. Keep using these turrets to our advantage. If you know we have these turrets, we might as well use them. Uh, if we just had standard cannons, we wouldn't be able to do this. Uh, the problem that we have now is that it is basically trying to land on top of us. And, um, well, that's not great. We have taken... Ah, oh, there we go. That is there. That's them gone. So, we've managed to take out the only source of propulsion. And, apparently, now the only source of... Uh, of flight because their suspendium chamber has been destroyed and they've still got water. Where's the barrier in all of this? What, it's, what has it been up to? It is currently there. It has taken a hit to its suspendium chamber but it's not moving. I don't know if that's a bug or not because I've never really seen that uh, happen previously but we are managing to take out the Dresden. And that's what we want. I'm going to speed up to max speed, because this is just a matter of waiting now. And I will now move to there. Ram over the top of it, no problem whatsoever. Head towards the barry and put it on aimed fire. That's rapid fire, that's the, that's the opposite of aimed fire. Um, although you can have aimed rapid fire, it just have to be very, very good. Uh, there we go. So it looks like the barry is pretty much dealt with yet. Yeah. So the back's been removed from the front. And that is a win. That is a win for 
The Winter Version 2. Combat stats, accuracy is good. And damage dealt is pretty good too. Okay, let's have probably one last fight. That looks very murky, doesn't it? Back to the snow. Land ship. Winter version 2. By far the better version of the winters. Airship. Let's see if we can get something about the same price. The sandwich is there, which is... <laughs> it's aerial charge launches, that's all it is. The Sunderland is a carrier. The Testington is... Sponsons. Then we've got the Torso Middles, no. The Crane is just... Oh yes, Harpoon Gun, that was for picking picking up friendlies and moving them around. Um, quite honestly, the best thing that we can put against us is the Basics. These are the most overpowered things we've made, I think. Um, the Basics and the Rock Tosser. And I think that'll be overpointed, though. They are overpointed, but... But only by a little bit. I don't expect to win this fight. <laughs> Just pointing it out there. Don't expect to win the fight. But we'll try. We're going to target the Rock Tosser first. Oh, no, don't leave combat. Um, unpause it. Tell us to move back uh, as best we can. Move back, and there we go. Um, you can see that the Rock Tosser is actually getting a bit lower. Luckily, we have these Suspendium Rocks in the way. You can see that the Basic is going for a ramp. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And you know what? I'm going to target the basic. You can see shots are coming out from the basic. If you're not sure what the basic's armed with, it's got um, loads of harpoon launches. That's pretty much all it's armed with. Um, on the back, it does have some rifles. Uh, actually, you know what's better? Is if we sit here. Because we've got the ability to fire the flak at them, as well as the harpoon, uh, as well as the, uh, the cannons and the turrets. Should I say? And we're still causing damage. That's very surprising. Where's the high-level bomber? High-level bomber's up there. It's not getting close enough to do anything, really. Looks like we've got some explosions there. The disadvantage of what I'm doing here is essentially this could go horribly wrong at any time. Um, if we take out one of them gas bags, it's going to land on top of us and we'll lose pretty much all of the uh, <laughs> all of our uh, tank. Uh, I'm going to go for uh, rapid fire, quite frankly, because it's so close. Um, I'm not going to go underneath it now. That would be bad. We are getting targeted by the rifles on the back. But... How are we doing for... Yes, I'm going to move over here. I don't know why the rock toss is not getting closer. I'm just going to try and, try, try and squeeze past there. <laughs> you notice it's putting... For some reason, it's putting the aft towards us. Oh, I know why. It's because the uh, the aft is technically the one with the most uh, ammo on it. Okay. Well, I'm going to stay here. Oh, hang on. I know why that's not moving. That's the only bit of propulsion they had over there. See that bit there? That is where they had a, um, a sail. And, um, well, it's not there anymore. And what's that on fire? Is that their sails on fire? It is their sails on fire. Okay. So we must have had a lucky shot at one point and just took out their uh, sails. <laughs> okay. Well, let's just speed up a bit. I think that's uh, game set and match. The problem that we have is that we are running out of ammo. 90 ammo of 200. I've put it onto aimed fire because time is uh, something we have without. Time is plentiful. Ammo is not. So I'd rather take my time and hit it. And it's still... Right, there we go. It's now out the fight. So I'm not going to fire against that because, quite frankly, we don't have the ammo to spare. We still might lose this because we might run out of ammo. It's very feasible. 
we're down to almost a quarter of our original ammo. Compliment. The rock tosser can't move. It can't fire against us. But it doesn't matter. Because if we run out of ammo, we lose by default. And if it's still got ammo and weapons, which it has, then we are going to have some problems. However, it is losing a lot of its gas bags. It's lost one suspendium gas bag. It's got leaks on two others. And eventually, one of these is going to blow up. And take the rest of it with it. But we're down to 38 ammo. There's the last remnant of any propulsion that they had. Sadly, we're not hitting the right bits. There's another explosion and a little bit falling off. There's fire as well. And they are able to put the fire out. We're getting some chain reactions there. You see it uh, going. Three suspendium chain, uh, gas bags here. And it's still not falling out the sky. It's got this suspendium rock, though. Keeping it in the air. But if one of these blows up, it's probably going to take the rest with it. And the rest of the ship. And we've got 12 ammo to deal with it. It's going to come down to luck. It is going to come down to luck. Can we take one of these out? If we do, it's probably going to be a win. But with two armor remaining, doesn't look good, does it? I think that's it. We've still got whatever, whatever's left loaded is all we've got. That's it. That's it, we're out of ammo. We lose, technically. I mean, I can put up to max speed, but it's not going to matter. They're not going to surrender. They can't move. If I move there, I just get shot. That's all that happens. Um, can we use that to our advantage? If this was still alive and we went over the top of it, this might drop bombs and blow that up, but it's not going to bomb itself. Um, I mean, we haven't got much coal, but we don't need it. Um, no, I think basically it's a stalemate. Realistically, it's a stalemate. Because I can't destroy it, it can't destroy me. I can still move though. So this is classed as a mobile, but it's just not going to give up in this uh, scenario. That's destroyed. And that's the amount of damage we've taken. I would put to you that we have won it. As in, we've destroyed the basic, and this thing can't move and technically can't even float. It's only the Suspendium Rock that's keeping it um, aloft at this stage. But, technically, which is, you know, the best kind of right, I guess, um, it's just going to be a stalemate. We can't do it. So we'll just have to leave the fight and exit combat. But, I think, realistically, we've won that one. We've done more damage. Um, if we had some more ammo, we'd be able to do it. We just sort of sat around there. Either way... That has been a bit of Airships Conquer the Skies. I would put to you that that is a decent vessel. I think the the, the Wintermark one, the original idea, was to have something that was not the Mini Tankingtons. We've got a lot of the Mini ones. And it wasn't stu something stupid like that. And it wasn't something large like that. It was basically a... It was a realistic, useful ground vessel. And... When we built it originally, it was 2999 There's the original cost. It can repair itself. It is slightly overcrewed, only by three. And it can heal its crew with a sick bear. The downside is it was too expensive. So we made the version 2. The version 2 being more than... Well, it's 2467 So over 600 cheaper. 600, about, well, 650, something like that. 640. Either way, it's a lot off it. Like, you, you'll you notice 600 credits easily, which we have done. Um, I mean, it's a mini tank. A, 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 a mini, uh, where is it? Uh, the mini tank. Where is it? Mini tank is 510. So for the price we we can get five we can get a mini tank for and change for what we've saved on this one. We can't heal, we can't repair, 
but we don't need to. We have 24 crew, recommend is 23, so only one more rover. We've lost a flat cannon. We've had a reduction in the amount of coal that we have. But, oh, obviously we've re we've also lost uh, the ability to defend against boarding. So that's where, if we were to verse something that could board, that could be a potential issue. But, it's heavily armoured, it's not particularly slow, and the weapon loadout is quite good. It can deal with things that fly, it can deal with things on the ground, and overall, I'm very happy with the version 2. Let me know what you think about the design. If you have any suggestions for changes and amendments, by all means, let me know in the comments. If you have any suggestions for designs you would like to see built or any challenges, then once again, pop them in the comments there and we'll see what happens in the next episode of Airships. As always, if you have enjoyed the video, thanks very much for watching. Take care and generic partings.